Hey guys, Claire here, and we've got some hot new Pokemon content coming your way. We noticed you guys really liked our last Gen 1 Remix video, where we applied the design philosophies of Ken Sugimori circa 1996 to the newest Pokemon designs from Sword and Shield to see what these crazy new Pokemon might have looked like if they were born into an 8-bit world. Before we get started, I want to take a second to thank our patrons. Their support helps allow us to keep making videos we love for all you guys out there to enjoy. If you've got a buck to spare, consider making a pledge on our Patreon to keep subjectively healthy. Alright, let's get started with Scentiscorch. As I'm sure many of you know, I recently made a video about the development and especially the art direction of the original Pokemon games that came out in Japan in 1996. While conducting research for that video, I found a lot of old sprites that were cut from the final games, tastefully described by HelixChamber.com as lost Pokemon. Of the various Pokemon that were lost to the limiting factor of the Game Boy's 3 megabytes of cartridge space, the one that sticks with me the most is a little guy named Crocky. This is all we have left of Crocky, a fuzzy black and white sprite that apparently describes a very nervous looking crocodilian centipedish draconian creature. Based on the name, it's likely Crocky was eventually heavily redesigned into Totodile, but this guy's winning grin and decidedly alien features still really stuck with me. So I decided to use Crocky as the basis for my Gen 1 remix of Scorch, since I found the long, flat body and head adornments to be the best analog I could find among the other Gen 1 designs. I'll also be using elements of Gyarados's original design, which was basically just a really big, really scary looking worm. Gen 8, more so than any other generation of Pokemon I can think of, really took a lot of creative risks with their designs. While there are some misses along with their hits, subjectively speaking, the design team under James Turner really went all out for Sword and Shield. Scentiscorch really doesn't look like any other Pokemon before it. It has a complex pattern on an unusual and unique body, so its features really need to be simplified for this to work. The Gen 1 designs, which were often designed as 8-bit sprites before even having their concept art drawn up, were necessarily much more straightforward than the newer designs made for today's games. This design definitely gave me some trouble, as you can tell from the various erasing and redrawing, but I think it ended up in a good place. I made its body type rounder and segmented to make it more like the other Serpentine Pokemon of Generation 1, and created a simple fiery mane motif to replace Scentiscorch's complex crest. Many of the first-gen fire types just had random crests of fire or fire-tipped tails, so this fits pretty well. Its eyes became the classic early anime angry eyes, and I gave it an insectoid mouth similar to Paris's. I gave it horns to mimic some of the real Scentiscorch's diagonals, and a lot of early Pokémon also happened to have horn motifs. Color-wise, I borrowed mostly from Magmar to get these really saturated reds and oranges. Here we are, Gen 1 Scentiscorch. Next up is a fan favorite, Wulu. Wulu is obviously a much simpler design. It's cute, round, and has colors analogous to a real animal. All easy enough. The main challenge I faced with Wulu was making it distinctly recognizable as the modern Pokemon we know, while also keeping it visually different from Marip which is also basically just a cute ball of fluff. I figured out pretty early the change in silhouette would have to happen by sectioning the fluff, since anything more might be straying too far from the source material. 
Since Wulu has segmented braids alongside its face, I decided that it wouldn't be too big of a leap to section the wool on its chest and head, a la Eevee or Vulpix. I also gave this fluff a texture more similar to the fur on Growlithe to further diversify it from Mareep's softness. The jaggedness also helped create a nice visual contrast on an otherwise simple design. I gave Wulu more realistic hooves to contrast Mareep's more stylized legs and gave it Gen 1 ears. I simplified the eyes and also gave it a single horn instead of the small sheep horns on the original Wulu, which is another common motif in the first generation of Pokemon. In addition to making bolder design choices, the Sword and Shield design team also used a lot more black and white in the palettes of the new Pokemon than had been present in the older generations. This may seem like a simple detail, but Wulu's real palette looks way too out of place next to the real Gen 1 Pokedex, because Pokemon Red, Blue, and Green were all designed with compatibility for the Super Game Boy in mind. The Super Game Boy was a plug-in for the Super NES that would allow Game Boy games to be played on a television in limited color. So even though the original games were in black and white, Game Freak was designing the original 150 Pokemon with color in mind. However, the color options the Super Game Boy enabled were still extremely limited, so the developers had to choose just one main color for each Pokemon that would hopefully convey to new players the type of Pokemon. A Pokemon like Wulu that's essentially just black and white just wouldn't have been designed for a game that was trying to make use of this new technology. I decided to give Wulu's base coat a reddish brown tint, which is still neutral enough to read as a normal type, but gives the design a little more dimension. Alright, that's Wulu. Pretty cute, right? The last Pokemon I want to give the Gen 1 treatment today is Copperaja. Like with Senescorch, there's a missing Pokemon sprite from Pokemon Red and Green's development period that I thought would make a great base for our Gen 1 Copperaja. Only about half of the sprite has been recovered, but we can still tell that it's an upright beastie with a body type I imagine is similar to Rhydon's or Nidoking's since these body types made up a lot of the earliest Ken Sugimori designs. I really like Copperaja's design. It's sprightly colored, sports an interesting pattern, and has a higher level of concept beyond just elephant. However, the rigid, inorganic body shape wouldn't fit for an animal-based Pokemon in Gen 1, so I'm going to leave a lot of that blockiness behind. I'm also making its shovel-like trunk a bit smaller, otherwise the trunk would take up too much space on its sprite, disallowing any other complex design elements. Since Copperaja is now bipedal, it needs a greater range of movement out of its arms. I decided to show articulation by making the arms segmented, almost giving it an armored appearance. The implied shoulder pads are also very Gen 1 core. Though I love the orange marbling pattern on Copperaja's back and face, Nothing nearly so complex existed in the early games. Really, the only motifs even kind of close are the striping on Electabuzz and Arcanine, so I used a similar stripe pattern to adapt the copper veins. For the secondary design elements, I tried to keep the wavy aqua marks relatively simple, but I still think I may be pushing it in terms of the design's complexity. Even after muting down the entire palette, it's still looking really saturated for an early Pokemon game. I wanted to keep some of the detail around Copperaja's eyes, which imply a painted makeup look, though this detail obviously had to be reduced a lot too. Unfortunately, this change especially really takes a lot of personality away from Copperaja, but I guess there's no helping it in this case. Looking over the nearly completed design, it's pretty hard to tell what type this Pokemon is supposed to be. 
which, to be fair, is a pretty tall order since steel type wouldn't be introduced until Generation 2. By emphasizing Kaparaja's toes and tusks, I'm hoping to give it a rock type look, but this design is still admittedly a bit all over the place. Tell me in the comments if it looks too crazy for Gen 1, or if there's something else that could be changed here. Anyway, with that, I'm wrapping up today's video. Here are the three designs that I've given a Gen 1 makeover. Would you put these retro Pokemon on your team, or did I go too far? As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, let me know if we should make more videos like this one in the future.